tease him. Got somebody who knows what the hell they're talking about. <sighs> because uh, they haven't got any at the moment. But anyway, I, I, uh, I was saying about a new phenomenon. And that is that as the traditional press has to withdraw, they still got the BBC, they still take a look at Lewis, but they have all sorts of other communities to look after in a very, very wide-ranging area. So there's very little focus on our community, or for that matter, the communities across the, across the county until County Hall manages to screw something up. The Sussex Express, they do their very best, but unfortunately they've had to retrench. Uh, they were almost uh, sold, or they were almost went bust no more than about six months ago. Uh, so they have to watch their pennies. So they don't do the job that they used to, or that we were used to with a, a scribe with his pencil and his notepad sitting there making notes at a council meeting and uh, going down and talking to councillors. Those days have gone for, for those newspapers. And when it comes to uh, radio stations, well, we don't actually have a, a local radio station except for Rocket Radio. Uh, and Rocket Radio does a good job in its short life, but it's only on the air for about two weeks. And when we started it as Radio Cayburn way back in 1997, a long time ago, and it? it's been going since then, and it's managed to keep its head above water. And thanks really to uh, uh, Rupert and Andy Thomas. You know, quite often the heroes behind things are unsung. So any of you out there who know the Thomas brothers, actually there are three of them. Julian, who is also a good journalist, but he um, he pops off to uh, Southeast Asia from time to time because he was uh, a reporter with the China Times, the China Times, China Post, um, and uh, out of Hong Kong. So, uh, but if it wasn't for them, uh, there probably wouldn't be uh, a rocket radio, and we would have no voice whatsoever. Well, now we've got Rouser Radio, and it's only building. We've only got a, a few listeners, but that's building as well. And uh, we have got to the point where we're now talking to a distribution expert to make sure that we can get a, a pretty fair hearing uh, uh, across the, the county, uh, but also around the world, because we do have people who listen in, who tap in. I regularly get comments after the broadcast from people in Russia, would you believe, people in the Balkans, people in Canada, people in the United States. Uh, I haven't had any from Australia yet, but I think that they're walking on their heads at this time. of. I have no idea what time it is in Australia. What I do know is that uh, on the west coast of Canada, for instance, uh, that it's about 20 past 10 right now. Uh, and... Uh, they haven't gone to bed, a lot of them, and even if they have, is they tend to uh, to think, I wonder what's happening in other parts of the world, and they tap into us, and I'm grateful they do, and I'm grateful for their comments, but I'm also grateful because they pass on stuff to us, and when I rant and rave about the local council, is I, I, I hear from one particular friend and colleague, who I've known for many years and I trust, that the, the city of Victoria, which is quite one of the most beautiful cities that I've ever been to in British Columbia, on the west coast of British Columbia, it's not here on Vancouver Island, it's not on the mainland, and uh, it, they have exactly the same problems as we do. And the electorate do exactly the same thing. When it comes around after complaining all year, they put the same people back in because the names are familiar. And we've got an election on May the 2nd, and that you can bet your bottom dollar <laughs> that the change won't be too great in terms of who we vote for. Although perhaps the electorate might just surprise us this time, because I think that we are getting thoroughly and utterly fed up with politicians gazing up their own navel uh, and, and getting all worried about whether their procedure and their protocol is right. Well, of course procedure and protocol are important, but they are not the most important thing. The most important thing are the voters, the electors, the taxpayers. Those are the most important things. Those are the people that councils are supposed to look after, and they are doing a pretty abysmal job, if you ask me. OK. One thing about Rouser Radio is we might make statements, but we make them so that people can argue with us. And we are perfectly happy for people to say, come on, Keith, stop being so stupid. This council does a great job for this reason. Da -da 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 -da. I, on the other hand, would say it doesn't do a great job for these reasons. Da -da 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 -da. The debate is on. 
and that's terrific if we can have a civilised debate. Not like the Brexit debate where families fell out, friendships ended because it was so emotional. But we can have a good debate, a good solid debate, with differences of opinion about how we are governed here. Oh, Keith, you are ranting this morning. You are really in fine fettle. So why don't we actually... Um, I, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what, I, I can't help it. Uh, um, I think we should uh, play a, a local track. It's Skywalker, and the people that sing this are a duo out of New Haven. And boy, are they good. Dandelion Charm is their name. Claire and John... And uh, you can catch them. This is their, their season for appearing on stage. Keep an eye open because they appear all over the place. They appeared in Hove two or three weeks ago and we helped promote that concert and apparently it was a magic evening. An absolutely magic evening. So if you see Dandelion Charm appearing, uh, pop down and, and catch them. Uh, great combination. And what am I talking about? Well, here they are so you can judge for yourself.
Flair and John. Dandelion Charm, great duo. Catch them if you can. We're uh, running towards the end of our allotted time. Not forced by anybody, by the way, but uh, we think that half an hour is plenty uh, for you to dip in and out of and perhaps catch the essence of what we're doing. So uh, two or three things. Uh, uh, first of all, a, a good thing, I think, and that is that the old, uh, they call them the Turkish baths, certainly they were baths, uh, that are down at the bottom of Friars Walk, right on the edge of cliff. Um, they uh, uh, have been approved for uh, uh, use of uh, some form of uh, therapies, uh, therapy, either school or organisation or club or whatever. Uh, and uh, it's good to see that used as something because it is a historic building in, in Lewis and it's good to see it used. Uh, secondly, Maria Caulfield, apparently, and I say apparently because I didn't catch it myself, asked a question at um, Prime Minister's Question Time. Good for her that she muscled to the front, but then wasted the opportunity because, as somebody said, you know, why didn't she ask about something that is local, about the trains or, or uh, about this new road or whatever? Well, she didn't ask anything about the new road because she's part of the secret cabal that are trying to push it through. You want to know what I'm talking about? Go to uh, Lewis I. Lewis I. Uh, uh, web page it's um it's a cracker uh, they are really good investigative journalists down there whoever they may be and i have no idea who they are uh, but they know their stuff um, and if you really want to detail on this proposed new highway go and take a look at it there frankly i think it's, it's, it's uh, you know you, you talk about uh, cuckoos and cuckoos nests <laughs> he's got <laughs> Really, <clears throat> not much thinking goes on in, in political circles. But anyway, Maria wasted the opportunity and uh, instead asked about uh, uh, was the Prime Minister aware of the fact that an, uh, a council in the South East that uh, 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 the Conservative had gone to Lib Dems or the Lib Dems had gone to a Conservative or Labour had done this or whatever. Well, Labour doesn't stand, it doesn't stand out exactly in this area, but still, uh, <laughs> it is a political force. Um, and uh, it's it just quite quite astonishing that, uh, it, it, as this correspondent said, that she wasted the opportunity. We don't really care much about the shenanigans that political parties get up to. What we want is good governance. And at the moment, politics and the politicians are in such disarray that the executive, you know, those people, civil servants, those people who, um, hang on, The old frog came back for a moment. Uh, the, uh, those civil servants who actually run things uh, are running it the way that they want to. Uh, and uh, when we've got politicians who are um, playing silly buggers, if I can put it that way, then that's when the Sir Humphreys flourish. They love it because the politicians have taken their eye off the ball and the executive get on with all the things that they want without having to tell any of us. Anyway, that, uh, that's one thing that's happening. Oh, we're coming to the end of our time. Um, uh, one thing that I think that we need to understand is that governance must be open. We must know what's going on. If you've got your finger on the trigger for the atom bomb, or an H-bomb, or whatever they, we now call them, nuclear deterrent, okay, you may not want to tell anybody, but after that, we should know. I am going to take uh, the weekend to recoup, to assess what's happened this week, which has been hurly-burly for me, and uh, then we'll be back on Monday, and uh, we'll let you know what, what's going on. as a, a council meeting on Monday, and I think there's also a scrutiny committee meeting. Be interested to see what comes out of Monday politically, won't it? Or will the executive take over again? <laughs>